In today's video, I'm going to show you how we can use Jet Engine to create great looking calendars and link those through to dynamic data. So as you can see, I've got a demonstration in front of me. We've got a calendar on here for August. And as you can see, we've got two different festivals. We've got the Green Man Festival and the Cool Day Festival. If I click on any of these, you'll see it'll immediately take us through and show us the actual details for that particular festival, map, etc, etc, etc. So I'm going to show you how you can set things up so you can link it through to your calendar. It's all very simple and straightforward, but can be incredibly powerful. My name is Paul C and welcome to WP Touch, the channel where I help you get more from WordPress. If you'd like to learn more and be kept up to date, hit that subscribe button, smash that bell icon and be notified every time we release new content every single week. Okay, so I've installed Jet Engine and what we need to do first of all is go and enable the calendar function. So we take a look in the dashboard, we've got the Jet Engine section on the bottom right. What we're going to do is we're going to come into the first option which is Jet Engine. And inside there we've got the Modules Manager. Now there's a couple of things you can enable in here. One we want is calendar. So make sure that's checked, hit save, and then you should find that you have the calendar option available to you. So once we've done that, we're now ready to go on and start creating the actual jet engine listings and the jet engine post type. We're gonna use those to actually populate our calendar. So let's do that first. Come back out to the jet engine section on the left-hand side, and we're gonna come down to post types. Once you're inside there, this will list any post types you've created before. Now, a post type is a custom post type. In other words, it's a way of creating custom sections inside WordPress. As you can see, I've already created some. We've got business and we've got event. So we're going to create a new one. So we're going to click on add new. Once we've done that, we've got a range of options we can go through and set up. Some of these are optional. Some of these are things we have to put in. So we need to put a name in and we need to put the slug in. So for our example today, we're going to create a simple classes section. So what we're going to do is we're going to call this classes. The slug, we're going to set that as classes as well. The labels are purely optional. If we click on edit, you can see we've got a range of different things in here. We've got things like post type, singular name, admin menu, text, and so on. So these are basically the way things will be displayed inside the dashboard. It's up to you if you want to change these. For this example, I'm going to leave them as they are, but you can if you want to go into those label settings and change those as and when needed. Next up, we've got the settings section. Now, we can leave pretty much everything inside here as it is. So we've got is public, publicly queryable, and so on. So we'll leave those as they are. Post capability or the capability type we're going to leave as post. So it'll pick up the normal post things such as the title and the things like featured image and so on. You can set this up to have an archive if you want to, which I would suggest you leave switched on unless there's a reason you don't need it. Next, we're going to set this to be hierarchical. We want to make sure that we have a hierarchy of data for our classes. Then we're going to set our menu position to three, and this will just dictate exactly where it will be in the left hand side. And then we're going to choose a menu icons. We're going to set this and we're going to just choose calendar. We'll filter that out. So we say calendar, we'll drop a calendar icon in there. And then we've got supports. Now the supports is basically the default settings or the default functions you have as a typical post. As you can see, we've got title and editor, and that's perfectly fine. We want those in there, but we also want to add in the thumbnail and featured image. That just means we can apply a featured image to our particular class. Once we've done that, we can come down and we can start creating our meta fields. Now the meta fields are basically just the name of the additional custom fields you want to add in on top of the title, the editor, and the thumbnail. So we can put as many as we want in here to have relevant information and we can group things together if we want to use custom taxonomies and so on. Like I say, we're going to keep this really simple and straightforward. So we're going to add a meta field in there and we're just going to put in class date. Underneath that, we're going to put class underscore date, which is the name or ID that will identify this custom field. So these have to be unique, so make sure that they are exactly that then we've got the type in other words what kind of information is this custom field going to hold we want to change this and we want to set this up to be the date so we say date and you can see we put a description in if we want to we say save as timestamp check this if you will be sort a query post by date so if you want to sort your posts by date it's worthwhile checking that and the final option is just basically the field width. We're going to leave that as it is. So we've created a very, very basic custom post type. So we're going to scroll back up to the top and we're going to say add post type. That will save that out. You can see now on the left hand side, we've now got classes, which is our new entry. At which point we can now go in and start adding in our classes. So we come into add new. You can see we've got the title, the actual description area, the featured image, and our new section at the bottom, our new custom field, which is the class date. So let's just fill out a couple of these. I'll create a couple of simple classes so we've got some information in here we can use. 
So I've gone ahead and pre-filled out some basic data for the other class, and we're going to click for the class date, and you'll see we now get a nice date picker. So we can easily come in and choose exactly what date this is available. So we say this is on the 30th, on the Friday, and you can see that pre-fills the date out inside there. Click on Publish, and we've created our first class. Now I'm going to create a couple more classes using the same thing, but put some different dates in there, and we'll come back and take a look at how we can start creating the calendar, then linking everything together. And there we go. We've now created three classes and applied all the details, including the dates that they're available. The next thing we need to do before we create the calendar is create the listing. Now, what exactly is a listing? Well, if you imagine the entry on any of our calendars, if we jump back to our example, you can see this is a listing. So that little description there where we've got the name, we've got the actual image we want to use, and anything else we may want to apply to it, like times, locations, anything at all, we need to create that. So to do that, Come back into our dashboard, we're going to come back over to Jet Engine and we're going to choose the listings option. Once we've done that, we're going to open back up into our listings. You can see there's all the listings I've previously created, including the calendar event listing, which you just saw in the example. So what we're going to do is we're going to come into Add New and we're going to set up a couple of things. Listing source is post or terms, so you can set this to be a post type or if you're using taxonomies, you can use that. Next up, from post types, you can by default, it's coming from the posts. However, what we want is we want to take it from our classes. And finally, we're going to give this a name. So we're going to call this classes, create our listing. And once we've done that, we're going to go to Elementor like you'd normally expect. Now, once we're inside Elementor, we can now build out the contents we want to use. So we just quickly jump back over to our example. For this, we just got the thumbnail image and we've got the name of the actual event. So we're going to replicate the same kind of thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab an image, so we're going to scroll down and we're going to take advantage of the listing elements that we have as part of Jet Engine. So you say we want a dynamic image, we're going to drag and drop that over there. You can see we've got the source, it defaults to post thumbnail, which is perfectly fine. Then we've got the image size, we're going to set this to be the thumbnail, because we only want a really small example of this for our calendar. Set that to be in the center, and what we're going to do is say this is a linked image. And the linked image is going to permalink. Now, what that's basically saying is if someone clicks on the image, it'll take them over to the actual class listing details page, which we will create after we set the calendar up. So there we go. We've set the basics up on there now. If we wanted to set a fallback image, if someone didn't upload a thumbnail, we could do that by using this fallback image option at the bottom. However, we'll leave that as is for now. Next, we're going to do come back out of this, going to scroll back down to the bottom. We're going to say dynamic field. I'm going to drag and drop that into our layout and from there we're going to just choose which says post term data which is perfectly fine object field is the title in other words the name that we've given this particular class if we want to we can come in and style that so we can say we'll adjust the colors on there and we'll adjust the typography so it all sits a little bit nicer so we'll adjust that to be around 14 pixels and we'll set this to be something like open sans doesn't really matter what we use we set that on there there we go we can adjust the weight and so on if we want to, but all I want to do is set this to be centered, and there we go. So we've created the basic elements, that's all we need. So we're going to hit publish on there, and now we've created the actual listing item. So to jump back out of this, exit back to our dashboard, and what we can do now is we can come into our pages section and add a new page. And from here, we're going to create our new calendar. So we're going to call this class calendar. We'll click publish just to make sure we save those changes. Then we'll open up Elementor and we can insert the calendar element and then we can start styling and doing everything we want on there. First thing I'm gonna do, get rid of this title, this part of the hello themes. So we'll just disable that. Come back in and we're gonna scroll down until we get to those elements that we want. And in there, we've got the listing calendar. So we're gonna drag and drop that onto our page. And inside there, you see it says, please select the listing to show. Now, we've just created the listing. So what we need to do, come to the general section, click, and we're going to say classes listing. As you can see, all the other ones that I created previously are also listed there. However, like I say, the classes is the one that we want. Now, once we do that, you can see it now pulls in the classes that we've created. However, they're not where we want them to be. They're basically showing up under today's date. So how do we deal with that? Again, very, very simple. What we're going to do is we're going to change this. We're going to come in. You can see it says post publication date to group them. What we need to do is click on there and say date from custom field. Now click on that. That now removes them all from the screen because we haven't told it what custom field we want to reference. Now when we created our custom post type, we also created that custom meta field that held the date. If you can't remember what that was called, if we just jump back over, you can see we named it class underscore date. 
So that's the reference that we need to use for the meta field. So we come to the meta field area, we'll drop that in there, and you can see now that it immediately pulls in the relevant data and puts them into the right locations. So really, really simple to do is just making sure that you know what that custom field's meta field name is and making sure you say group posts by the date from a custom field. So there's the basics of our calendar all set up. And this is a really simple example. And if you want to get in and fine tune and do a lot more things, you also have post queries. Now we're not gonna use these in this particular example, but what you can do is you can create multiple different types of queries to filter that information even further down. So you can do things like filter an order by date, you can filter by various parameters, tons and tons of really cool things. And in future videos, we may take a look at doing that if enough are interested. And if you are interested in finding out more about these post queries and creating more advanced calendars, let me know in the the comment section below and I could take a look at creating a video if there's enough interest in doing that. But there we go, there's the first part of it. So let's just jump into the style section and now we can go through and configure everything we want about the way this looks. We've also got a range of pre-designed layouts. So if we say we could choose, currently we're looking at layout one, we can choose layout two and you can see that changes a few elements on there, layout three, again, some slight differences, but we can go through now and we can fine tune and tweak this to get exactly what we want if we want to. I'm gonna pause the video at this point, make some changes to this just to tidy things up, and then we'll take a look at how we move on to the next stage. And there we go, with a little bit of tweaking, you can see we end up with a much nicer looking calendar or with our dates set up inside there. So we've created the calendar, we put the dates in there, we create the template. The next thing we need to do now is create the actual page itself for when we click on any of these classes and we can take a look at them. So back in the dashboard, and what we need to do now is come into the template section of Elementor Pro. So to come to the templates, we're gonna say Theme Builder. And from there, we're gonna create a new single post page. So we're gonna click on single, we're gonna click on add new, and then we're gonna go through and set the parameters for this. So the first thing, single is perfectly fine. Then select the post type. Well, obviously we've created a custom post type, so we need to tell it that that's what we want to use it for. So we're gonna come down, choose our classes, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna call this default classes single. And we'll create, create our template. That'll take us into Elementor, at which point we can then start fleshing out the template we want to work with. Now, if we'd saved any previously, we could list those under my templates, or if we want to pull in any sections we created or blocks and things, we could do that kind of thing, but we don't want to. We're going to close this down. We're going to create something a little bit more bespoke. Now, I'm not going to spend a huge amount of time on this. I'm going to copy and paste a few bits and pieces over and then show you how we can put the data in. So let's start this off just by creating a simple header at the top. So what we're going to do is we're going to tell it we want to put the image, the featured image in the background. So we're going to come into our background type. We're going to click on dynamic. And from there, we're going to say featured image. That will drop that in. We can just quickly set this now to style it the way that we want and set that to no repeat. Now I'm going to go through this quite quickly because I don't think I need to cover this in too much detail. If you're working with Elementor, you're probably more than accustomed to working with creating templates and so on. Okay, so there's the first part. So the next thing we're gonna do now is gonna drop in the dynamic data. First thing we're gonna say is the post title. We're gonna drop that in there and that'll flesh that out for us. So H1 is fine, we'll drop that into the center and we can just quickly style that if we want to. So I'm just gonna take some styling that I've already got. Okay, so there's our spacing and we're just gonna come in and style the text do that very quickly. We'll set that to Montserrat. And we'll make that a little larger, thinner, uppercase it, there we go. So next up, let's just simply drop in something to separate that out. So we'll drop a divider in there. Again, I'm gonna do this really, really quickly. Not too worried about exactly how it looks. This is more just for demonstration purposes than anything else. Next up, we're gonna drop in the meta information. So we just drop the post info underneath that. There we go. So let's just set that to be centered. Quickly set the icon colors and the text color. And we'll drop in a little bit of extra spacing underneath that. So just come into there and we'll drop in some padding at the bottom. So we'll just say 50 pixels of padding. Okay, so there's our basic page title. So you can see that's pulled in the class that we're currently looking at. Next up, we're going to just simply drop in a very simple section below that. We'll add a little bit of spacing in there. So 50 top, 50 bottom. And we'll come into our layout and we'll specify this is going to be about 700 pixels wide, somewhere in there, that'll do. Come back into our widgets and we're going to simply grab our post content and drop that into there. 
And at the top of this, we're going to drop in something else, which is going to be a custom field information, which will be the date information that we actually have for our class. So what we're going to do is we're going to come into a dynamic field and drop that underneath there. And you can see it says music class. We don't want that. We want to choose metadata and we can put in our own custom field in there, which is our class date. Now you can see this pulls in the data, but it makes no sense. So what we need to do is format that. Now, one of the things with Jet Engine, it makes formatting data very easy. All we need to do is enable the filter field output option, and then we have this callback section. We click on there, you can see we can choose exactly how we want this data to be presented. So you can see we've got format date, format date localized. So we click on that. You can see that now puts in the date. If we choose the format date localized, you can it'll change it based upon the localization in which you're in. We'll set this to be format date. You can then choose the format that you want to display it in. However, this looks perfectly fine for me. If we want to, we can drop in an icon prior to that as well. So we could just put in there, let's put a calendar icon in there. I'll click on that. You can see that puts the icon in. And now if we want to, we can go through and we can style this any way that we want. So we can put a little bit of a gap in there and so on and so forth. Now, this is pretty ugly, but it works. So the next thing we need to do is publish this and then tell it where we want to use it. Now you can see it's intelligent enough to know because we chose it as classes where we set up the parameters at the beginning. It says, well, there's a good chance that you're going to want to set this to be dis displaying your classes. And it's right. However, if you wanted to change that, it got it wrong. You can see we have lots and lots of different options on where we want to display this. And also, do we want to display it on everything or do we want to sort of filter this down a little bit lower? Classes and all is perfectly fine. We'll hit save and close. We've now created our custom calendar, linked it through, and we now have our details page. So let's take a look at this on the front end of the site and see how it all works. So here's our page. As you can see, our calendar with all of our different classes are listed. And all we need to do is click on any of those classes, and that'll take us through now to the custom post page single, where we can see exactly what's inside that particular class. This is a really, really simple example of how you can create a calendar. Obviously, you can go way more advanced than this, but this should set you up to get a good understanding of how the whole process works of creating these dynamic classes or whatever you want, then linking them through to this calendar. Now, if you want to get more of the Jet Engine and all the kinds of things you can do with dynamic information, check out the videos you can see on screen right now. They're going to help you get more out of WordPress, more out of your skills. If you've got any comments, questions, or feedback on this video, drop those in the comment section below, and all applicable links are in that description. As always, my name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.